Hello. In this video, we are going to be sketching a vector diagram so that we can visualize the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum and the magnitude of the z component of the orbital angular momentum. We begin with a coordinate system that consists of the z-axis vertically and horizontally we have the xy plane. This isn't specifically just the x-axis, it's anywhere in the xy plane. Now let us assume that we have a orbital angular momentum that corresponds to the orbital angular momentum quantum number L being equal to 2. If this is true, the magnitude of the orbital angular momentum, which we put in sort of absolute value brackets, is equal to the square root of the quantity L times L plus 1 times h bar. In our particular case, that gives us the square root of 2 times 3 times h bar, which is the square root of 6 times h bar. Therefore, we can imagine the orbital angular momentum, in this case, being a vector with a length of the square root of 6 times h bar and one or more possible orientations in space. Remember, a vector has both magnitude and direction. In this particular case, it's easy to see that the z component on the z-axis is exactly equal to 0. So this corresponds to the case where the quantum number m sub l is equal to 0, and we want the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum, which is l sub z, and our formula for that is m sub l times h bar. So in this particular case, we see that the z component, the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum, in this case, is exactly equal to 0. A second possible orientation of this vector, which we show here, corresponds to an m sub l value equal to positive 1. So in this case, the z component, the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum, is equal to h bar. And we can highlight the fact that this is the projection onto the z-axis. Putting a little dotted line to show this corresponds to m sub l equals 1, or the magnitude of the z component being equal to h bar. Another way to visualize the projection is to think of this as sun coming or light coming from the right, and the vector cast a shadow on the z-axis, and this is the length of the shadow. The orbital angular momentum vector could also have this orientation, such that its projection corresponds to an m sub l value of positive 2, and therefore the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum is equal to 2h bar for this particular vector. Again, remind it, subject to my artistic capabilities or lack thereof, the blue, purple, and red vectors all have exactly the same length of the square root of 6 times h bar. There are two remaining possible orientations for this vector. Uh, one of those two involves pointing in the negative z direction, and this corresponds to an m sub l value of minus 1. And the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum in this case is equal to negative h bar. The fifth and final orientation of the vector, we draw in pink. This corresponds to an m sub l value of minus 2. And in that case, the magnitude of the z component of the angular momentum is equal to negative 2 times h bar. So although the length of the vector stays the same, it has five different possible orientations 
in quantum mechanics, corresponding to m sub l values from minus l to plus l going by ones. We can contrast this with the case in classical mechanics, where if we had an orbital, we had an angular momentum vector of any type, its possible projections onto the z-axis would have an infinite number of values. So long as we had a non-zero vector, it would not be limited to these five particular points. It could have any possible projection anywhere from zero up to uh, square root of six h bar. So that's a very important feature to keep in mind is that these type vector diagrams apply to the quantum mechanical case. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.